Let's I heard go. you, Michael. Go. Let's go. There Good go. man. Honestly, oh, we were yeah. looking at the early it. finish there. How are you doing, Michael? Where turning are it you? Off and on always works. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm tuning in from Eastern Europe, guys. I'm tuning in from, from Romania, actually. But I've been watching oh, it for years. Nice. So I think I'm tuning in for the second time. Oh, very nice. Pleasure Fantastic. to have you with us. Fantastic, Michael. So you're in your Spurs shirt. You're in Romania. You're clearly an old fan of Ili Dimitrescu and Georgi Popescu. <laughs> what did you make of tonight's performance? We could have done with some of Popescu's uh, defensive midfield qualities, I think. We could have, yeah. I mean, look, what I'm going to say, it's going to be maybe a little bit surprising, but I think it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was the first half was really, really poor in terms of, you know, we were we were, we were not getting to, to the balls. We're second to the balls. Pape Matesar was really awful today, and I really like the kid. But I think you were right, Barnaby. Like, you could see that he was hesitant. Like, we 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 had him before, like with such a drive, uh, just such desire to play and be first on the ball, and and just that first half was. I was expecting Ange to to take him out at halftime. Yeah, so you know, we all know. Wonderful. Yeah, we all know we've got injuries, right? Like we've got a lot of injuries. This is at our lowest, let's say. Like if you look at the squad, I don't think it can't get worse. Uh, it, it can get worse. I don't want to jinx it, but I don't think it can, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, however, you were saying it, right? I would rather have uh, this type of football and lose four two against Brighton. Than, than see through through a match like like San James's before, right? Um, I think that's that's my takeaway. I mean, these guys like mentally as well. If you think about it, we had a chance to score a goal before the halftime. That had made a big difference. I feel like Angie's style of football really relies on on these players having the conviction that even yeah. though they go behind, right, it's not the end of the world. I remember in the Beckham documentary actually when he played for Real Madrid and he started playing with the big guys, right, with Ronaldo, with Zidane. They were going down and they were laughing because they knew they can come back, right? So that's like my, my first takeaway is that I think Ange needs to just make these players believe that this type of football is risky. And you, if you don't score, if you're not clinical, you're going to go behind, especially against a team like Brighton. But then, you know, you, you can't like lose faith in the football that you're playing. And I feel like that, that happened in the first half. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my first takeaway. I think you know it's gonna get better for sure. I mean, half of our team is it's on the sidelines. Michael, can I suggest that that is some dangerous common sense from you there, and that will not be appreciated by many of the Spurs <laughs> fan base. Uh, no offense to any Spurs fan base, but we are kind of renowned for going off on the big one when things don't go our way. Michael, can I just say I completely agree? Can I ask you a few questions about? Maybe what people were most worried about before the game, that being the kind of Davis, Royale, um, Hoiberg triumvirate. Is it as simple as a lot of the Spurs fans think, which is as long as we play those players in our team, we will never do well? Or did they actually have a decent game tonight? And it's just unfortunate that we don't have the players there to play Ange Ball to the best of its ability. Look, I, I actually, I was listening to you guys as well as watching the game, and I agreed with you. I didn't see the first half as being, a, you know, a part of the game where our central defenders made some big mistakes. But what I feel like like Ange's game is, is going to do is that it really relies on the quality of, of, of the players, right? You have to be really good individually. So it's that like one or two percent. Obviously, like Romero at centre-back is going to make a difference. Even though it's not a big mistake from Emerson, if you look at the two goals that they scored, well, not the penalty, but the first one, the chances they've had, because they could have gone two, three, four nil up. Yeah. It's just that extra quality that Romero has and Emerson doesn't. Does, does, him, does, does that make him, a, a, you know, not fit for Spurs? As a starter, yeah. And that's not his position anyway, right? So if you think about it, I wouldn't be too harsh on Davis and, um, and Emerson Royale. I don't think they should start for Spurs if we want to win trophies. Like, that's yeah. not the players that you want to start. But again, are you going to have this type of situation all the time? I think obviously, like the squad needs to to be bigger. Like we all know that. Hopefully, in January we're going to sign some some center backs and some new players. Um, so yeah, it's just it's a, it's a small difference, right? I wouldn't call them awful players. Like they don't deserve to wear the shirt. It's just they're being asked also to to play like Emerson, especially on you know unusual position. And it's this type of football. This requires individual quality from players. Like it's that one-on-one -on -one situation. You have to, you have to have quality in this squad if you want to play mm. Ange ball and win trophies. Mm. No, I completely agree with a lot of the things you're saying there, Michael. My, my um, thoughts uh, about Ange, I made quite clear uh, uh, in in the instant match reaction. How do you think Ange did today? He, how would you rate his performance as the manager? And did he make any mistakes? 
I would have made some changes at halftime, but I'm not okay. the manager, right? I yeah. fully trust Ange. Like, I see some of the fan base as well, and it's normal, right? Like, I was reading the comments, like, we're never going to win a trophy. I actually really do believe I haven't seen Spurs win a trophy in my lifetime. I'm 29. Oh, wow. okay. um, I, I I haven't, well, the, the cup, I don't know when, when that was. I was really, yeah, yeah, but look, yeah. I want to, I want to, I'm not saying that's not a real trophy, but I want the league, man. Like, we yeah, need yeah, to win yeah. the fucking league in my <laughs> lifetime. Otherwise, just... And I think yeah. Angie's going to deliver that. Like, I really do believe that this this manager, and not because only because of his style of football, even though that's so entertaining. Like, I would rather watch that than anything else, honestly. But okay. because of his 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 approach to, I would say, just the player's mentality. I've seen so many videos mm. with him, you know, doing speeches in the locker room. Like, just the way he sees fo- the way he sees football players, right? If you look at Mourinho, for example. I hated us with Mourinho. Like, I couldn't stand it. I think that was the only time I couldn't watch Spurs. And I think it's being proven that Mourinho is out of touch with, like, today's football players. Like, he cannot do what he did before. When he had good results, he had, like, Zanetti, this type of, of players that, you know, it's not the new generation. Like, you, you cannot approach them at the, the same way that you do then. I think Ange has this magic touch. He makes the players uh, just go for him. Like, I think the players love him. And that's mm. super important in today's game, right? You see Guardiola as well, like, he has that. And I think we needed a manager um, with that touch. I don't think, you know, neither uh, Mourinho nor, nor Conte nor, nor Nuno had that. So, yeah, I will wrap it up by saying that I really do believe that Spurs will win a major trophy with Ange if, you know, if nothing weird happens, like, I don't know, we go bankrupt or Levy just, you know, comes out, says that we can't spend any dollars for the next five years. Well, that will, um, Michael, that will get a lot of people talking in the comments about <laughs> Daniel Levy, that's for sure. But one thing I will say, I said it to Amir just before we came on air. I said, I think what we need to look at in terms of realism and what is possible is that Ange is able to build in a similar way to how Jurgen Klopp did mm. given four, five mm. years or, or at least four or five transfer windows to get in the squad players and, and the first team players with the attributes he wants and if we can have that position that Ange gets in and it just happens to coincide with when Pep and Jurgen Klopp decide to stop because they've had a long time at their clubs, Spurs could easily at that point, and I'm not saying it couldn't happen before, but definitely if that coincided, Spurs could be definitely there or thereabouts to become the next Premier League winners after that. What do you think about that dangerous I, statement? <laughs> look, I completely agree. I remember the first time we played Liverpool at home uh, in, in Klopp's first year. And I think we at won Wembley, wasn't one it? or four one. Mm. Yeah, at Wembley, right. The, the stadium was under construction. So that's where we are right now. Like, yeah. I think people should remember that. That's where we are right now. And we look a lot better than Liverpool did in that first season, I would say. So give this man some time. Uh, obviously, like, back him up. I think last transfer window was was brilliant. We have to like keep pushing because we had such a poor squad. And some other thought comes to mind right now. Like you play Emerson Royale uh, at center back with Davis and you have Dyer on the bench, right? Like I've been asking for Dyer to like not play at least for years. And I see Ange comes on and he prefers a fullback in that position. So I think he has also like the balls to just say like, I need these type of players. Mm -hmm. I don't care like for how long you've been here. We see Loris not, not being anywhere near the squad. I think we need a manager with that type of like character, right? Like walk into the locker room and like, this is how it's going to be boys. Like, I, I don't care if you're world champion, uh, this is the football we're going to play. And if you don't adapt to it, then, you know, I'm going to put a fullback in your position. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know. I played football myself as well for about 17 years. I actually played pro for like one year in Spain. Um, nice. I don't know how I would feel if, you know, there wouldn't be any player available to play my position and someone else would do it, like, over over several matches. I would I really think I do know be... how you'd feel, Michael. I think you'd be fucking pissed yeah, off. And sure. uh, I yeah. think Eric Dyer probably is. And I think what Ange is saying to Eric Dyer is, you've got to find a new club, mate, because it's not going to happen here for you. And look, I'm not you know, and I get abused from this for this on the comments. I'm not a big Eric Dyer hater the way a lot of people are. What I would say about Eric Dyer is, is he good enough to play centre half in an Ange Ball team? No. Has he played well at centre half under Conte in the last year or so? No. 
and therefore has Big Ange, as you said, had the balls to say these players who have the mental scarring from previous Tottenham uh, eras, I am big enough to say to them, man to man, you're going to be left out and you're you're going to have to leave the club. And that's what's happening. I agree with you. And, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't think Eric Dyer has done a great service to Tottenham Hotspur in over a decade or a decade of play. He was excellent in central midfield with Moussa Dembele in Pochettino's True. first successful season. That should not be forgotten. Yep. He is True. an England international. England managers don't play people just for a laugh. He is a talented footballer, but he's not the right footballer for Tottenham Hotspur. And just made that clear to him, no game playing. And he needs to find a new club in January, ideally, so we can get him off the wage bill and bring in players who suit Ange Postacoglu's style of play. I agree. I just want to add one more thing as well. You were talking about Richarlison, um, and I really yeah. like the guy. I think he he was definitely not having his, his best time, you know, first year. But something that concerned me today as well, um, he scored two goals from an offside position, right? Mm. And both of those, like, that's an easy stay on side situation it's not like brighton was brilliant with their line especially the second one like yeah, that's a little bit concerning one. to me because the type of football we're playing like we need a striker who's aware of his surroundings and like you you can't stay offside in those silly situations right like that's a little bit concerning to me because i think we really do need a striker as well i know center back is the priority right now it's definitely the priority for january but Today's game really got me a little bit concerned over the long term for Richarlison, right? I mean, those are the moments that are going to cost you big time in big games. Those Agreed. are very silly mistakes. If, you, if you're not aware of your, I don't know, man, it was just such a silly mistake. The second goal, I was watching it live and I was literally shouting at the TV, just stay on side. It was such an easy situation. So that's, that's the last thing I want to add. And also Brian Hill um i've seen the guy play in spain before he joined spurs i mean the kid is talented but he's not meant to play in the premier league i'm sorry he's he's just not like he's not he's not physical enough and like he doesn't have the courage i mean i was shouting that he shoots that ball i, I remember the, in today's game uh when he tried passing it back and then he he, he took a shot when he shouldn't have like his decision Agreed. making is not mm, good yeah. Agreed. Um, but over, totally agree. Overall, guys, overall, just wanted to share some positive thoughts as well. I really do think that uh, we're going to bounce back against Bournemouth. I think if Come there's on. something that we've seen uh, Ange do really well is yeah. really build this, this momentum back as soon as we have, you know, uh, a step wrong. And I think the players feel it. So I'm really looking forward to the next game. I'm really looking forward to, um, to Ange ball again at home and uh, come on you first. Me too, Michael. Thank you so much for your call, mate. Honestly, that's been really good. Do call in after that Bournemouth game. I will be back here for that. And it'll be good to talk to you again. Thank you so much. That was excellent.